Governor Abbott of Texas just invoked self-defense against the border incursion and the migrant crisis. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Chris Martinson. Let's talk about this. This is a really big deal. And cites, he cited invasion from an article in the U.S. Constitution. And guess what has happened uh, after he did that? All of those states in red, including little old New Hampshire right there up near where I live, have joined in and said, yeah, we agree. This is this is a very serious thing. Abbott sent this letter off to Biden saying, hey, you're not following the law. And so we're reclaiming the law for ourselves. And it's gotten pretty spicy ever since. Guess what? Christy Nome, the governor of North Dakota, has also said, I am on my way to the war zone. Her words, not mine. And she said Biden is failing, or that's Biden's handlers, because let's all be honest, Biden's not really doing anything, I don't think. It's his handlers, though. Who are they? Love to know. Uh, so we will continue to do everything we can to help secure the border, she says. How about this? Um, Oklahoma getting ready to send their National Guard to help Texas in their fight against illegal immigration, or as you now know if you've watched my other piece, migration, not immigration. This isn't immigration. It's not a contained, controlled, thoughtful process. This is just a flood of people coming over the border and um, unvetted, unknown. And that's a big, big issue. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So this was the letter from Governor Greg Abbott, January 24th, 2024. I think this is going to be a very famous day that's going to go down. This kind of read like a letter to King George, you know, his first sentence. The federal government has broken the compact with the states. Big deal. Let's look at this part in yellow a little bit more closely. He says here, quote, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and the other visionaries who wrote the U.S. Constitution foresaw that states should not be left to the mercy of a lawless president. Goes on to invoke various articles in the Constitution, clauses. Says here that he says, for these reasons, I've already declared an invasion under Article 1. This is to invoke Texas's constitutional authority to defend and protect itself. Line in the sand. Federal government has completely failed. Full stop. They failed. To protect not just Texas, but all of the United States. And this is a very serious issue now. So game on. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased to see this. But we have another angle on this. When I was down in the Darien Gap recently, we saw a lot of military-aged men coming through. And we saw military-aged Chinese men, well-muscled Chinese men with stiff backs and strong demeanor like you would expect from military people. Can't say for sure that they were, but kind of sus. At any rate, on January 17th, this letter goes out to the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader, the Chair, and uh, House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. We've got, uh, yeah, the Homeland Security and Government Affairs, all of that. So this is a letter that's written, and let's look at what it says here. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Speaker, Senate Majority Leader, Chairman, as former senior executives of the Federal Bureau of Investigation with deep experience combating Dangerous to the nation, we write to express our concern about a current specific threat that may be one of the most pernicious ever to menace the United States. The danger arises from the nature of the threat itself. Wars and espionage and bombings and riots are sadly familiar delivery systems of instability, intimidation, and security. The country, they go on to say, um, is in really deep trouble because in 2021, the demographics of those crossing the porous southern boundary, <coughs> excuse me, started to shift. Young men from around the world traveling alone and holding questionable motivations dramatically increased in number to become the most common profile of those breaching the nation's borders. The most common profile. Young men all on their own, without any attachments, and unknown motivations. A startling number have been found on the terrorist watch list, true, or are from countries designated as state sponsors of terror, distinctly unfriendly to the United States. Hey, if the United States has bombed a country for the last 10, 20 years and it's probably created some enemies and we're just letting those enemies in across the border in an unvetted, unfettered way, that's not good. So 2021 what changed in 2021? This is what it looks like. U.S.-Mexico Border Patrol apprehensions by sector. Let me get my little laser pointer out here. You see here, they went way down during the Trump years. And then right when Biden comes into office, they didn't just go up. They exploded. These are monthly apprehensions. And by the way, they don't apprehend everybody. So these are the minimum numbers we would expect. 
The apprehensions here at this level equate to, on a monthly basis, 1 million coming in per year. This is a 2 million per year. So from 2021, 22, 23, at least 2 million per year, 2, 4, 6, probably 7, 8 million, not including those, I don't know, I can't even estimate how many were not apprehended. So this is a really big deal. Now, Carrying on, uh, that's what happened in 2021. Uh, open border, just uh, just completely green light. And by the way, when we were down there and we talked with people and said, hey, how did you know? Like, like, well, how did you make the decision to come? You know, the, a Haitian who was living in Chile for seven years suddenly gets the bat signal to head north, you know? And we asked, well, how did that happen? Same story everywhere. They're on their phones, social media, and there's these messages coming through that say, hey, green light, time to go, Okay. So it's kind of interesting who's sending those messages and and even if they aren't being sent nefariously by somebody, we might ask the question how it was that people got the green light to pass along to their friends. Like, who's sending that? Carrying on, quote, this is particularly alarming in light of the Hamas terror attack on Israel on October 7th. Yeah, it's alarming for other reasons, too. Those of us who have fought terrorism know that historically successful terror attacks invite mimicry. Okay. We know as well that terror leaders intentionally cultivate throngs of young men possessing a certain easily manipulated personality type to carry out atrocities. It is stark to say so, but having a large number of young males now within our borders who could begin attacking gatherings of unarmed citizens in imitation of 10-7 in Israel or something else and at the behest of a foreign terror group must be considered a distinct possibility we would be remiss not to call out this possibility, potentially, sorry, grave threat in the most direct terms, the warning lights are blinking. They have been blinking, but they've been blinking for a very long time. Like, dudes, we should have been talking about this way back there in 2021. This shouldn't happen at all, even back earlier. We shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a case. A nation without a border is not a nation. You have strong borders or you don't. I know as a U.S. passport-carrying citizen, that I couldn't, like, reverse this. I can't go into any one of these other countries these people are coming from, just walk in and set up shop without being grabbed and and I'd be a run afoul of their laws and I'd be sent home. Like, this is just, like, it's a one-way street. It's a four-lane, one-way highway, I should say. It's kind of a weird thing. We should be asking some questions about that. We should have been asking some questions about that, but finally, I guess we are now asking questions about it. So... They say here, and yet this very real concern does not seem to be getting the focus it logically deserves. Yes, it's very illogical. It's not getting a lot of focus. The reason for that is because this is an active, open, supported, desired policy. This isn't some thing that happened and we're not talking about it. And it's kind of like, how come nobody's talking about the fact that we have four loose nuts on this wheel as we drive up the highway? It's not like that. This is a situation where it's encouraged, desired, and wanted. Whoever is, is in the Biden administration running this program, they want this. This is a thing they want. And they sent out the bad signal to the world. And now we have this migrant invasion coming into the United States. Abbott's words, not mine, but also mine words. Um, and so how did that happen? Well, it was an active policy. This is not an accident. And these guys are saying, uh, you know, it's kind of illogical to be allowing in all of these lone solo young men of fighting age to come in from all over the world uh particularly places where maybe they might not have the best view of the united states all right what's interesting to me as well though the people who signed this uh, assistant director former retired former retired listen i'm glad they wrote the letter it's fine retired 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 former former retired former retired just editorially, I was I really want this to come from somebody who's still in a position of power because I call this the old retirement speech. That's when people get bold. They're like, say the things that they should have said when they had the power and they had the reins and then they wait till they're retired and suddenly they're bold and they say everything that needs to be said. Can we just get back to the point where people say what needs to be said while they can do something about it? I think of this as uh, Dwight Eisenhower's farewell address in 1961 on january 17th he said this farewell address he said he warned against the establishment of a military industrial complex kind of a very famous retirement speech you know 
And he said here in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex, the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Thanks, Dwight. Could you have done something about that while you were president? Uh, same thing. Let's have a call out and a shout out now to people who are in power doing the right things while they have power, which brings us back to Governor Abbott. He's doing the right thing in this case. I can't say I agree with everything uh, Governor Abbott's been up to, but Vigilant Fox writing here on Twitter said, holy smokes, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says that he is prepared in the event Biden attempts to take control of the Texas National Guard. Prepared? Prepared for what? Quote, that would be a boneheaded move on his part, a total disaster. Abbott said, we are prepared in the event that unlikely event does occur. He added, we do have other armed state employees on the border as we speak. <clears throat> this is a governor of a very large state warning the United States president or whoever his handlers are, the power structure in D.C. that They have armed people. Let that settle in. He said, um, he said, and you can be assured there will be more National Guard from other states and more law enforcement officers within the state of Texas and other states. And quote, I'm very glad to see this pushback because finally we're getting the pushback we should have had right from the get go. And by the way, this is, hasn't made sense to anybody. This isn't just sort of a Republicans versus other people. I mean, NBC, the water toting liberal press for, you know, for the deep state says no good answers for Biden as voters recoil over border crossings. That was the, the kindest they could put it. They they, they're like, uh, yeah, this is kind of a nonsensical thing, and it's getting spicy. Hey, you know what wars do? Michael Yan told me they grow, and they grow out of control. I'm not saying we're at a war yet, but this is getting spicy when the Oklahoma governor comes this close to asking his troops, his guard troops, to rebel against Biden. So if he sends his troops into Texas, and Biden says, I'm federalizing these troops, then what? What if the troops refuse? Well, now we've gone from a legitimate constitutional crisis into another layer of this story. So that's what's actually going on. By the way, if you really want to come, you want to find out what you can do about this, what you should be doing about this, come on by Peak Prosperity. We have, these are a companion sets of articles here. I'll let you read the headlines off of YouTube here because, um, well, just let that hang there. You know why. By the way, if you use this code down here today, you can get 30% off of a subscription. We have a fabulous community of people who are constantly investigating these things. I am your information scout. I do reports like this almost every day, interviews, lots and lots of content, all of which is actionable intelligence to get you oriented about what's going on in the world. I'll save you time. I do all this reading all day long and the synthesis, so you don't have to because I know you're busy. And then we turn that into actionable intelligence. Like, what do you do? What do you do with this information? Well, there's lots of things you can and should do. Find out about that at Peak Prosperity. Use the code PEAK30 during the checkout process to get 30% off. By the way, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If it doesn't work out at all, you don't like it, great, no problem. Just let us know. No questions asked, full refund. With that, thank you very much for listening. Please come by Peak Prosperity. I would love to see you there. Bye-bye.